Hello, I'm Jeff Ray from St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I came down to Folk Alliance. This is what, 2023 is the year we're in right now? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm a roots and blues uh, slide guitarist, resophonic musician, um, playing this crazy metal resophonic guitar. I started playing guitar when I was a young kid at the age of 12. Um, when I was 17, I moved down to Memphis and got into the blues down there and uh, started playing a lot on Beale Street. And then um, after about three years in Memphis, I decided to move back up north and uh, went to Madison, Wisconsin and really kind of got a lot into folk musicians and into like alternate guitar tunings. And then from there, I uh, moved back to Minnesota and uh, discovered, that's when I discovered the resonator, um, which is a beautiful instrument that produces a lot of overtones. Uh, that is uh, very useful for the slide guitar because you can kind of play around with the notes and get a lot of sustain. Do stuff like that. Um, yeah, so in 2002, back to Minnesota and uh, discovered the resonator through, um, through a Minnesota res resophonic festival that was happening. And uh, some of my favorite artists were there, um, kind of pocket of people who played resonator guitars and uh, finally got myself one and uh, kind of went from there so um, and I write original music it's uh, it's really not blues it's blues kind of rooted but um, based off of like the finger style Piedmont finger style finger picking blues method of playing guitar uh, but from there I kind of throw in a lot of other elements including like Indian um, Indian classical music um, bit, little bits of it into the music and then uh, it maintains a very much a, a strong songwriter element um, in the music. I'm scared I feel like I'm going nowhere Feel like I'm going nowhere I'm lost Confused many roads to choose Hold my little girl's hand Give me 
yeah, when it comes to songwriting and the resonator, um, I pulled a lot of inspiration from uh, early like 1920s, so pre-war blues. Um, Booker White is one person in particular, or Tampa Red. Um, there's a large number of dudes, but those those are kind of the, the big guys. Um, Booker White had a re really good kind of uh, uh, rhythmic method of playing with his alternating thumb, and then all these little slide runs he would do. songwriting I'll do a lot of kind of that rhythm stuff um, with the thumb and the chukka chukas and uh, and then I'll do a lot of melody same kind of same thing as Book of White uh, but I might do it in with different melodies you know that aren't that aren't as common with the blues or something um, stuff that's I actually throw in like Indian classical music um, I've been inspired by this fella named Devashish Bhattacharya out of Calcutta um, who's a classically trained um, Indian musician who adapted that style into slide guitar. And he plays a lap, a lap style um, instrument um, called a chaturangai, which has a ton of strings and sympathetic strings and stuff, but plays it more like a dobro um, is how he does that. And uh, so I throw in some of those kind of melodies. So if you imagine Book of White combined with Debashish, you have something that's more like... Uh, <laughs> It's kind of a meld of two styles, I guess you could say, like blues and a little bit of Indian classical thrown in. Um, the resonators come in a couple of varieties. Um, some of them are wood bodied and some are metal bodied. This one's a metal bodied resonator. Um, this is a newer one, is, is uh, National is the maker, um, who was actually one of the original makers of resonators back in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, so this is an all metal bodied resonator. It's actually brass. Um, there's a couple parts on here you can actually see there the the nickel plating is worn away and it kind of reveals this this brass body um, the brass gives it a very <coughs> kind of bright feel or bright sound I should say um, and it's a very and the metal makes it very loud um, this thing projects like <coughs> you can hear it re reverberating off the walls and uh, the metal the wood body resonators are are kind of more tame in nature and are typically you see them more in uh, dobros that are often played as a lap style which is where the strings are raised up off the neck uh, and this, they're just kind of you can see players sometimes when they're standing on stage like this playing their instrument that's commonly referred to as a dobro um, even though that's really the brand name but it's now in the vernacular as a dobro um, and then the resonator is a, uh, it's kind of like an, an inverted speaker cone. So if you, um, it might be hard to see, but where the strings go over back here called the bridge, there is um, this round piece of wood that the bridge is connected to. And this is it's called, um, called a biscuit. And that wood uh, trans, transmits that vibration from the strings into a, a metal cone. Um, and the metal cone is facing uh, in this direction, so it's, it goes, it kind of flails down that way into the guitar. And that metal cone is what really causes the resonance. Um, and a really good cone gives a really good sound. And so National Guitars has kind of been my, one of my favorites because they, they hand spin their cones and they sound really good. Um, they spin them in the old, the old fashioned way. Uh, some people will buy a cheaper resonator and then buy a different cone and put the put that cone in to get a kind of adjust the sound of the instrument. But uh, so yeah, that's the rundown on the on the guitar. This is a, a bottleneck slide. Um, this one is the they call this a coracidon shape, um, and what it is is it's based off of the old medicine bottles. Um, 
in the like 1920s, 30s, 40s. Um, you would purchase, you know, at a local pharmacy. Um, it might contain really kind of odd drugs <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Uh, so the the this particular slide being glass it gives it a little like brighter sound, um, and it's lighter, so it's kind of uh, easier to move around, I guess, and the uh, get better intonation, in my opinion. Um, but other people will use, you know, they can you can use anything that's kind of round um, and like a hard substance. So people even have wood slides or they have brass slides, uh, ceramic slides, um, steel, you know, all sorts of or chrome would be another kind of chrome plated steel um, and they give a they all give a different kind of texture or feel to the music um, a lot of blues players uh, that play kind of a dirtier sounding um, slide style would opt for like a copper or like a steel type slide um, like something metallic whereas a lot of electric players might opt for a glass one um, one of my biggest slide influences is Dwayne Allman and he, that's the kind of slide he played with was this bottleneck slide, the glass one. With the slide, slide in particular, um, you know, it's, it's a single movable fret. And so it really, it's really helpful if the guitar is tuned to an open chord. Um, this chord right here, you know, is a, it's tuned to open D right now. And so that way you can kind of walk yourself through chord progressions with the slide and you can still make minor chords and major, minor. Um, and then you can also use that chord as your bass foundation lines around um, and uh, so in my songwriting influenced by some of those uh, 70s folk musicians like Nick Drake or Bert Janch they would experiment with alternate tunings uh, and so I have various tunings that I'll use um, not just you know there's open D and open G are very common tunings in in blues um, and slide guitar but I kind of take it a little further and I attenuate the tunings by changing a couple of like the higher strings <laughs> Um, if I was to retune, it would be a little bit of a wait yeah. <laughs> in the video, but but uh, that's what I do in my songwriting. So a lot of my songs are in different tunings, which is challenging for for a songwriter and performer. It really kind of makes it a little trickier because you really got to be quick to retune. Um, you know, and there's that uncomfortable si silence. And you're trying to deal with that. So. All right, uh, here we're going to be ready. Cool. Um, this song is a song I wrote for where I grew up in Minnesota, um, near the beautiful Driftless area, uh, with all the valleys um, around the Mississippi River, where I used to go play my guitar all the time and kind of learned, kind of became a guitar player. Uh, so I wrote a song dedicated to that part of the world. This is called Valley. <laughs> i 
kiss my pen Few of them I got to know One that I fell in love with She is the one that I released my seventh recording uh, called In the Fire in June of 2022. Uh, this album uh, is sort of re a reflection on the pandemic um, as from a musician's perspective, but also from a healthcare perspective. I work um, on the side in healthcare and um, the area in particular that I was working um, in St. Paul was affected by the un civil unrest. Um, after George Floyd's murder. Um, and uh, one of our favorite music venues in, in the Twin Cities, which is Minneapolis, St. Paul, um, in Minneapolis is called the Hook and Ladder Theater, which is directly adjacent to the third precinct that was burned down in the riots. And so um, this album kind of came together as you know this reflection on the pandemic and um, George Floyd. And uh, we ended up releasing the album um, at the Hook and Ladder Theater in Minneapolis, right next to the uh, burned down precinct, um, just as a kind of a, you know, symbolic gesture to show that you know we'll persist. We're still here. Um, the community, you know, chose who to spare <laughs> in that situation. So, um, so anyways, it was just kind of our our little reflection on the whole situation, and um, yeah, we're still moving along, moving forward. So. That's the latest recording called In the Fire. I'm Jeff Ray. I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, you can find me at jeffraymusic.com uh, on social media all around. Uh, happy to be here at Folk Alliance and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody again next year.